Hello and welcome to the talk Know your tools, quirks and flows of integrating SAST into your pipeline. During this talk, we will take technology agnostic look into the modern SAST tools. We'll look uh, into how they work internally, uh, what limitations they have, and what areas of operating uh, SAS tools are usually overlooked by the users. We will purposely uh, leave scientific and academic discussion of SAS tools out of scope. Also, we will not cover um, other types of security testing uh, that exist. And we won't be specifically discussing DevSecOps processes because each of these topics are uh, huge burden by, by itself and requires different presentation. Brief self-introduction. Uh, my name is Artyom Bichkov. I worked in security for the last 14 years. I was uh, latest eight years dedicated almost exclusively to the application security field. I work as principal security engineer at Advanced Software Technology Laboratory at Huawei in Russia. And my previous experience included working as consultant or in-house engin engineer uh, for companies in different industries uh, with a focus on application security and uh, various types of offensive security testing. Let's start our discussion with defining what SAST is. SAST stands for Static Application Security Testing, which is based on the static code analysis uh, with security knowledge added to the process. Uh, static uh, analysis is the type of analysis that is performed uh, without actually running the code under analysis. And it works for both uh, binaries, compiled binaries and source code. But in this talk, we'll be focused exclusively on the source code analysis. With this definition in mind, let's review a general process uh, that's happening under the hood of the most modern SAS tools. Uh, source code is being fed into the SAS front-end that uh, builds a model by doing lexical analysis and parsing. The process is almost identical to the one uh, performed by compilers or interpreters. Uh, the model itself is uh, some sort of intermediate representation of the code we are analyzing, uh, transformed to the data, struct data structures used by analyzers. The next step is analysis. When the model is built, uh, it is fed to a set of different analyzers. Um, in general, uh, there are several different types of uh, analyzers, uh, semantic, structural, control flow, data flow, configuration. Some tool uh, authors or vendors may add uh, their own custom analyzers, but in general, uh, the set of analyzers look like, looks like this. Also, uh, security rules fit into the analysis phase uh, to actually help analyzers to detect security flaws. And after the, the process is complete, uh, we, as users, receive a result. And important uh, point to note here, right away, is that not all uh, SAS tools that currently, currently exist uh, do perform all these types of analysis. There are several reasons why well, completeness and correctness of the model or intermediate representation of the program is critically important to the SAS process, but the two more imp most important ones are incomplete or incorrect model will prevent uh, the most powerful, uh, the most advanced analyzer from working entirely. And the second one is it will keep potentially vulnerable components without analysis at all which in turn will lead to uh, missed vulnerabilities. The quality of the model build or intermediate representation created for the analysis is of great importance for the quality of the uh, 
analysis itself. But several things may go wrong here. Uh, one of the most common one is not is that SAS tools uh, could not resolve all the symbols uh, encountered in the program, and unlike compiler or interpreter, uh, not all tools do report missing symbols, leaving us uh, with incomplete model. Also, uh, SAS tools may not support all the features of the certain language that we are analyzing, and again, uh, they may not report whether they encountered uh, certain tokens that they could not correctly parse. And another uh, source of uh, inconsistent result is uh, using different configurations in uh, scanning and, um, and built environment, built in test environment. It uh, just leads to inconsistent and incomplete results of the analysis. Let's consider a few examples of how incomplete models may affect us during the static analysis. Suppose we have a small Python program that does nothing rather than return a secure random number, presumably secure random number to the user. It imports rand module, which is uh, currently not located in the project import path. It, it, it uh, is done deliberately on this phase. And as we can see, this module use the insecure random number generation, which will lagged by almost every SAS tools for that support Python. Let's try to analyze security and correctness of the program using static analysis tools. The first one uh, is linter for Python called PyLint and it immediately reports us uh, that it was unable to resolve uh, this module that testpy is importing and using. The second one is commercial tool uh, to perform security uh, analysis and it also reports that, that during the model building process it uh, encountered a missing import. And the third tool here is uh, Bandit, an open source uh, security scanner for Python code, um, which did not try to resolve this import. And uh, by the way, it is just its feature of which its user should be aware. Now is the time to fix uh, our broken imports and uh, run all the tools again. The first one is PyLint, and now it is happy. It, it doesn't report uh, usage of insecure RNG in the project because it is uh, not security-centered tool, but at least now it reports that uh, the program is correct. The second one is our commercial tools, and note that we are still trying to scan only one Python file. We explicitly include only testpy in our uh, analysis model. But when we list um, a set of files that was included into the build, we see that it included RandPy because it, the code from RandPy was imported and used by TestPy. And now we can use this tool to scan the project and we see that despite we did not explicitly ask to scan uh, RandPy, it reported that our project test is using insecure RNG from file RandPy. And when it comes to Bandit, its output doesn't change at all. It still reports only two lines of code that it was analyzing. Now it's time to fix uh, the scanning done by bend it to make it work as we expect it to work. To do this, we explicitly filled all the files, all the two files uh, that constitute our project to the bandit, and in the end, it correctly reports uh, lines of code, total lines of code of our project 
five lines of code into source files. And it correctly returns usage of insecure RNG. So uh, the, the lesson here is that not that some tools are superior to other. No, Bandit, uh, by the way, is a great uh, static code analyzer for Python, but this mode of operation, when you have to explicitly uh, provide all the source file for analysis, and it, it, it will not be uh, looking for dependencies for you, is uh, the mode of operation the user must be aware of to get most of the tools. Another impo important point to note when assessing completeness of the language program model is language fe feature support. I have rather anecdotal evidence uh, from the past. Uh, we had several Scala projects and developers used two types, uh, two approaches to construct the queries to the database. The first one is uh, to use Scala interpolation, string, string interpolation, which is insecure. It doesn't escape uh, anything. And there is custom interpolation, uh, which is wrapper around uh, special method in a normal library, which provided a secure way to build queries using string inter interpolation. And we used uh, quite advanced tool that reported both of the cases as false negatives. It didn't report anything. Uh, as, it, as it turned out, uh, our tool did not support uh, Scala interpolation at all, despite uh, supporting our version of Scala in general. And of course, it, it, it led to a set of uh, false negatives. Fal false negative is a missed vulnerability. We reached out to support, and after a while and few support tickets later, uh, the update was rolled out, uh, but by this time um, we noticed that all instances of different types of string interpolation were flagged as insecure. So we, we had SQL injection at every point, be it done through the insecure built-in Scala interpolation or be it done through the secure input sanitizing and all based. Uh, string interpolation. It turned out that uh, the support was the support for this language feature was added, but not completely, not 100%, and it lacked support for uh, user-defined or custom string inter interpolation. In the end, we received uh, a lot of instances of false positives, uh, which means that vulnerability was reported incorrectly. So to have high quality complete uh, model ready for analysis, I suggest the following strategy. First of all, if uh, your SAS tool emits uh, translation phase errors and warnings, be sure to check and fix all this. If your tool is not reporting uh, such issues, it's not the end of the world, it can be performed manually. Uh, linting tools may be run over the code base you are about to feed to SAS tool. Or if uh, you are using compiled languages, uh, you, you just may build project and may make sure that the, the build task completes correctly. If you are using SAS tool uh, that doesn't process any imports or third party dependencies for you, make sure you are adding all the correct paths, all the files that contain these dependencies to the scan. If possible, check metrics like included files and lines of code that were included into the build task or linting and compare in it into the, uh, with the output of the SAS tool, if the tool supports uh, such metrics. And to test uh, whether your SAS tool uh, understand on the, all the language features you are using. Uh, it's a good idea to write some small test cases 
with these features and feed it to the SAS tool to check how it behaves. And by the way, the, the great idea to do this is when you are switching to a new version of the platform, like new Java platform or new .NET version, and start starting using new features, uh, it's a, a great time to do such testing. At this stage, hopefully, we have a correct and complete uh, analysis model prepared uh, for our code base. Well, this is uh, actually only the beginning of the static analysis. So let's switch our attention to the analysis phase. And let's walk through the five types of uh, most con co common analyzer types. One of the simplest and most common um, type of analyzer is a semantic analyzer. It uh, works on symbols, identifiers uh, of functions, objects, variables, modules, uh, and uh, types of the objects and variables. It searches for certain uh, patterns defined by the semantic rules. Uh, for, for example, uh, calls to the functions um, that are considered insecure. Uh, as you can see, uh, and it was uh, in our previous example, insecure RNG in uh, Python, uh, random function in random module, uh, has its own rule in the band, uh, well, in the bandit and in the commercial tool that. Uh, we used. And this function is flagged as insecure. Also, good uh, semantic analyzers also can detect uh, renames of the symbols and identifiers. For example, if you import uh, insecure function from certain module uh, and rename it uh, to some non-relevant or even secure analog, uh, a good uh, semantic analyzer will be able to track uh, such a rename and flag that actually there is a match for the rule for the insecure ver version of uh, the function that was renamed. Um, you can actually think of semantic analyzer as a fancy version of grep utility. Uh, the second type of analyzer is structural analyzer. It's designed to check for language specific violations of uh, secure coding practices and it uh, usually detects improper uh, access control modifiers on uh, uh, classes, methods, uh, variables, uh, dead code. Uh, insecure multi-threading, like sharing uh, database connections across threads. It may detect uh, memory leaks, for example, when uh, not all execution paths can lead to the release of the resource, uh, and etc. And also, uh, this analyzer is used to detect uh, hard-coded secrets in uh, the program text or comments. The next type of analyzer is control flow analyzer. It uh, designed to analyze uh, all possible execution paths and uh, uh, control flow graph uh, in our program. It uh, generally de detects uh, defects that um, related to dangerous um, sequences of operations or lack of. Uh, necessary operations. Uh, for example, if you feed an untrusted XML to XML parser without previously configuring uh, this XML parser, uh, this will be this case will be detected by the control flow analyzer. It may detect uh, various types of resource leaks so where uh, not all execution paths again lead to the proper release of the resources. In some situations, it may detect race conditions or improper or variable objects or 
initialization uh, before use. As an example of defect that is discoverable by control flow analyzer, let's consider null point pointer dereference. Uh, here is a method in the Java that clearly has uh, one execution path that uh, may lead uh, to T not being initialized before being used. And as you can see, this case is uh, properly detected and reported by uh, a static analysis tool. The next one analyzer is data flow analyzer. Uh, by far, is, it is the most powerful uh, static analysis uh, type offered by modern uh, tools. It is designed to track uh, the flow of the data from tainted source. Uh, the taint uh, is everything that came outside of our trust boundary or inputs that is controlled by attacker. And data flow analyzer tracks uh, the flow of this uh, tainted input from the known source of taint to the known uh, sync. Uh, and the sync is a vulnerable function that may be exploited. And if uh, during the process of tracking it detects that uh, tainted uh, input was processed through the secure filter, be it XSS filter, SQL injection filter, uh, Array, array bounds checking or buffer length checking. Then it uh, removes taint flag from this data and uh, we consider that it is safe to pass this input as a parameter to the vulnerable thing. If uh, data flow analyzer does not detect uh, that tainted input passed through the filter, tainted flag is not removed from this input and when it hits the vulnerable sink, uh, this type of analyzer usually emits uh, reports of vulnerability. The data flow analyzer is uh, so important in, and powerful because it can detect any type of vulnerability that can be described uh, as a relation between known source of tainted data and known vulnerable sync and any piece of code that perform input validation and filtering in between. Therefore, uh, the classes of vulnerabilities it can find are quite broad. It can detect almost any type of injections. It detects binary vulnerabilities like buffer overflows. It detects XML external entity injections or insecure deserializations. And most advanced SAS tools also may use symbolic execution, automated theorem proving, uh, and SMT solvers to model execution of the code blocks, uh, modeling every possible input and output of certain code block to greatly improve uh, the res results accuracy. But uh, this type of analysis actually usually takes the most time to run. So, uh, it may not have a reput good, good, good reputation among DevOps engineers. But uh, to address this, uh, SAS tools uh, introduced incremental mode uh, scanning that improve uh, and reduce scanning time. But usually this implies that SAS tool will not use data flow analyzer du during this scan. Therefore, please check the documentation to ensure uh, that the SAS tool behaves as you expect it to behave. And here is an uh, illustrative example of uh, pet manipulation vulnerability discovered by Dataflow analyzer. As we can see, uh, the program has try catch block. Uh, it tries to parse file name, which came from the uh, command line argument to the program. Uh, if it contains symbols other than digits, uh, uh, the exception will be thrown and caught and after that uh, the execution will continue and um, we will be able to open any arbitrary file on the system and the 
this execution path was modeled by data flow analyzer and now we see that uh, it correctly identified path manipulation vulnerability. And the last one is configurational uh, analyzer. It operates with known uh, configuration file files format as well as um, configuration files uh, for known frameworks. If you happen to use mainstream frameworks, uh, the probably configurational uh, analyzer will work out of box for you. It is designed to detect no security misconfigurations and uh, it's I think straightforward uh, consequence that it will not work uh, if uh, in your project some custom configuration scheme or uh, exotic framework is used. And here is uh, the example of two simple misconfiguration uh, two simple security misconfiguration found in the Java Enterprise Edition uh, compliant server configuration. We just discussed all common types of uh, analyzers uh, that ship with uh, SAS tools. But what can go wrong? The first of all, if uh, we use uh, low quality model, if uh, our model for analysis is incomplete or inconsistent, uh, we uh, will are likely to re receive a high number of false positives and false, neg false negatives in the result. So it's paramount to make sure that uh, our analyzers operate on quality uh, program representation. Um, the second point to keep in mind is that if your project uh, relies heavily on runtime determinant behavior, like uh, it loads a lot of code uh, during the startup or runtime, or it um, use a lot of high order constructions like you know, when your project uh, heavily uses functional programming paradigm. It may turn uh, static analysis to an intractable problem and uh, you simply won't receive uh, any useful results. Uh, it means that if your code has a vulnerability that, that can be found uh, on the runtime, you have to shift focus to the dynamic cases, or at least for components that rely heavily on runtime determined behavior. And also uh, a common problem, uh, maybe the, the, the this is number one problem for uh, new projects that uh, running static analysis for, for the first time is uh, the high level uh, of both false positive results and false negative results because stock, stock rules that ship with uh, SAS tools may not correctly and they, they just may not suit the application. False positives and false negatives are a serious problem of static analysis. So here is a simple strategy to follow to address them. Uh, the first point is while it may be tempting to disab disabling rules that produce uh, a stream of false positives, it is not advisable to do so uh, because you may miss real vulnerability. It's better to adjust the rules uh, of course, you, you can disable irrelevant rule types. For example, if you have uh, a web service, it's completely okay to disable uh, rule sets for mobile applications. Uh, check all the false positives re reported. Um, audit, uh, perform audit of your project, uh, find all the sources of taint tainted input all uh, syncs and uh, enumerate all your input validation functions and just add them to the static analysis tools rule sets. Uh, if the vulnerability report is clearly ir irrelevant or clearly false positive, add exception. 
uh, when adding exception, do not add to to broad exception like uh, ignore or all cryptographic bugs in the files of this directory. And also, if uh, you are adding taint removal uh, or input validation rules, keep track uh, whether this rules rule applies to your own code or third party code. And more on this on the next slide. Suppose you are using a third party library and input validation function from it, and you have custom rule that uh, removes taint flag from the uh, taint source when passed through this function. And now imagine somebody tempers uh, this, this filter and it doesn't work anymore as you expect it to work. In such situation, uh, I recommend adding your own custom uh, test cases, either unit or functional test to complement this custom SAS rule to detect such uh, dramatic changes in third-party components. We are coming to the end of our discussion and it's worth noting uh, types of vulnerabilities that are not effectively discovered by SAS. First one is, I think, obvious one is uh, vulnerabilities not covered by the current rule sets and current analyzers. It's design and architecture flows, uh, for example, insecure inter-system or inter-service communications. Uh, certain logical vulnerabilities, how the business logic is processed within the application. Uh, there may be devastated, devastating vulnerabilities that are not discoverable by SAST. Operational vulnerabilities that uh, are relevant to the environment in which application is deployed and it requires a different set of tools to secure operational environment and find, find vulnerabilities in it. And usually some complex uh, multi-stage uh, or vulnerabilities that requires exploitation of trust are also not very good uh, candidates for detection by SAST. To sum up, what to keep in mind when selecting SAST tool? Uh, number one is to be sure that your language is supported and all the language features that you are using is supported. Additional plus, if the tool supports uh, frameworks that you use. This will make your life easier uh, when starting with a SAST. Make sure uh, you, you have access to all the documentation and it is complete enough that you can understand how the tool operates and to what are the special points to note. And also uh, prefer tools that offer customization fun functionality because uh, at some point you will definitely going to need it to address false positives and false, neg false negatives in your code. And lastly, what to keep in mind when you already have SAS tool operating and running. If the stock rules doesn't fit and uh, they produce a lot of false positives and false negatives, it's always a good idea to invest some time and to cover projects with the custom rules. If uh, scans run too slowly and um, uh, the time of scan is critical for your CI CD pipeline, it's a good idea to run the most heavyweight and time consuming scans uh, outside of the CI CD pipeline on the periodic schedule. Because otherwise, you may be missing some serious uh, security defects. And uh, the last thing is not put too much trust into the clean or green results of the SAS tool. Uh, as we discussed before, uh, it cannot find all types of vulnerabilities. It has its own limitations and it is by no means a silver bullet. So do not forget about other types of security testing. And this is all. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the presentation and see you on the live Q&A session.